inside the Metro Radio Arena. It's BJ Penn, Joe Stevenson. One man will leave with a belt around his waist. Our tale of the tape for this, the main event of the evening, Joe Daddy Stevenson, 25 years old, four years younger than BJ Penn. Penn is two inches taller, but the reach is identical, and they both weighed in at 11 stone. All right, gentlemen, we've been over the rules. Protect yourself at all times. Follow my instructions at all times. We're gonna have a nice, clean fight. Touch gloves, come on, ready to do this. Wow, what a hero's welcome for the Hawaiian BJ Penn. Taking on none other than Joe Daddy Stevenson. Sean, how much danger is there of BJ underestimating Joe Stevenson in this fight? I think, you know, that's been a that's been a, a factor ready, maybe in the past. You know, maybe he I'm hasn't ready. trained as hard Come for on, fighters as he should have. But uh, just from, from the information I've got, uh, he's trained oh. pretty hard for this fight. And he gets some big strikes delivered early. BJ Penn looking to finish it quickly. Lightweight championship is underway. Joe does not want to wind up at his back, and this is where he is immediately. BJ Penn came storming out. Joe is a very talented fighter, very talented in jiu-jitsu, but his jiu-jitsu is, there's levels in jiu-jitsu, and BJ's is a notch above Joe. It's a notch above most people in the world. Sean, you have battled the best in the world. You are truly one of the best in the world. But are there sometimes things that BJ Penn does that even make you go, wow? You know, for me, I think it's that flexibility. Yeah. That, that's something you don't see very often, and it's something that's hard to train for, because if you don't see that on a daily basis, it's hard to prepare for that. So the flexibility is definitely what uh, I think separates him from, from most of the other fighters out there. And the ability to move those legs, yeah. not just the flexibility. And he, he has movement of them like other people have movement of their arms. Mike Goldberg, Joe Rogan, former lightweight champion Sean Shirk, joining us here in the broadcast booth. One will leave with the belt tonight. Sean Shirk will get a chance to get it back. BJ's pressing Joe up against the cage, and Joe has a desperate look in his eyes, trying to avoid that. Well, it was a, you know, the, the amazing thing in the fight with Jens Pulver was that BJ Penn kind of just kind of overpowered him and threw him around, and Jens admitted that. Jens goes to 145 in the WEC. He's trying to do the same here early, Sean, with Joe Stevenson. It looks like he's trying to set the pace here, set, trying to set it at a high rate, maybe trying to tie it out. Joe uh, put some doubt in his mind. Um, I mean, he's doing a good job here of controlling the fight and hitting and, and trying to take the fight away from Joe right in the beginning. So far, so good for BJ Penn. A big strike early on Stevenson. Remember, this is a title fight, a championship matchup scheduled for five five-minute rounds. You could just see Joe as this fight started. BJ Penn, you know, he'll get in great shape. He'll make the way to 155, but you could see as they were introducing him what high level of BJ's got his he's back. In. Joe rolled over. Yeah, he's in, he's got his mount now. Wow. He's got a mount, he's great behind him. Trying to overwhelm and finish Stevenson here in the first round. I was talking with Mark Lehman. I, I ran into Mark Lehman at the airport. We were talking about BJ's control. And uh, he, he was t telling us how his top game, like his control in the mount, his control when he's got your back is just really unbelievable. And until you've experienced it, it's just another level of control that BJ has. Stevenson talked earlier in the week about this being his childhood dream to be a world champion And he's living his dream. He seemed very unfazed coming into this matchup, and he's looking to weather the early storm Well, Joe's done a really good job so far of avoiding I mean, he yeah. has avoided having BJ pass his guard. He got cracked there BJ had him mounted. They had the grapevines in and Joe got out of that situation, which is amazing in itself He's back to that spot again BJ's got some really heavy hands, and I think he's using those punches to kind of stifle Joe and, and make Joe try to roll away and make a mistake with, you know, with uh, trying to hurt him with those punches. Ben definitely able to pass guard with uh, relative ease here in round number one. He's got Joe inside control here. B.J. Penn gave Joe Stevenson a compliment when he said he reminds me of myself with his wrestling, his ground, and his stand-up. And it, it appears, as you said, Sean, he is not taking Joe Stevenson lightly. 
Like no, he's coming out, he's pressing the pace, and he's looking good. As he's pretty much dominating the top position, trying to establish uh, dominance early in the fight. So he's he's what, striking Joey's, from the bottom there. Joey's doing a great job of avoiding, uh, making sure that he got, BJ doesn't get in a dominant position. Is it a couple times BJ's got mount in him, BJ got side control on him, but he moved it back to guard. That's impressive. Stevenson really trying to strike from the bottom. There's not a whole lot of guys that can stop BJ once he's got into a dominant position. And Joe has done that, and he's brought it back to a much more neutral spot. Big elbow by Penn. Oh, oh wide open is Joe Stevenson. That elbow cut him wide open. Stevenson, you, you can almost, Stevenson's disgusted and upset because he's like, oh man, now I got cut. He doesn't want the fight to stop, but he is wide open. Wow. Nasty. That is one of the quickest bleeding cuts I think I've ever seen. Joe's upset. Like I said, that this cut is very well going to be the end of this fight because that is nasty. Yeah, that's like a broken fire hydrant. Depends on, depends on where that cut is. If that cuts, wow. it looks like it's in the middle where, yeah. where it could cause some problems. Well, let's see what they can do to close it up. Leon Taps immediately gets on it. Whoa, look at it dripping. Cuts on the forehead are always more bloody. They always bleed heavier. It's just, it's just a real bad spot. Sean, how do you mentally work through this if you're Stevenson the way you did in your fight against Kenny Florian when you were cut open? Well, you know, I mean, as a fighter, with all the experience that Joe has, he, I'm sure he's been in this position before. So, uh, you know, it just comes down to, to do, you know, how, how you train. You train how you fight. You fight how you train. Let's take a look at the elbow that caused the cut. There it is. And it's always the glancing elbows, isn't it? It's just the grazing elbow. Not a lot of power on that thing. It's just enough to cut up, just enough to open up a cut on Joe's forehead. And he knew it right away. Wow. They're, they're trying to get it to stop. One of the best in the world is Leon Tabs, working on Joe Stevenson. Fight will continue. Joe Stevens has a determined look in his eyes. This right here is why this is the greatest sport in the world today. Look at that. Dripping with blood, coming out and ready to go. Wow, and a different look in his eyes. Almost like now you've wounded me, now you have a big problem. Well, there's a sense of urgency now. He knows there's a cut on the head. If the fight keeps going, it could cause more, cause more of a problem and make the doctor take a second look at it. Good oh, elbow big elbow by Joe. By Joe Stevenson. What a picture of a warrior. Looks like that cuts in a spot in Joe's, Joe's forehead where the blood is going right between his eyes. It's not going in either eye, so the doctor could see that and, and, and let this fight keep going. Wow, hands tight. Moving around. Wanting to avoid this fight going back down to the ground. BJ has excellent standing. Stevenson with that urgency that Sean talked about, willing to exchange here. Bottom with a hook. Lightweight championship on the line. Stevenson is key eyeing with every punch. He ate a left there. He was doing that from the ground, too, Joe, in the first round. Yep. I, I don't think I've ever seen that from him before. Joe's boxing, to me, looks a lot more crisp than it has in the past. you got to figure with, with BJ's takedown defense, he must have known that this fight was going to remain on the feet for a while. Uppercut. You know, Sean, you pointed out that the blood seems to be dripping down the center of his face, if you will, and not into his eyes. And it almost appears from our angle right here that it has not impaired his vision yet. Yeah, I mean, that, that's something the doctor's looking at very closely right now. The blood's not going in his eyes. He can still see. You can notice he's not wiping his, his, his blood away from his eyes because it's not in his eyes. Where, where uh, if, if it was a problem, now the doctor's going doctor. doctor's to look at it again. But you can see there's no blood in his eyes, so right. it shouldn't be a problem. And this is why, in the first round, he reacted the way he did to getting cut open because, as you know, against Morin, you don't want to fight to stop that way if you feel fine 
other than the fact nice. you're bloody up. You, you don't nice. want to lose a fight by a cut, and you don't really don't want to win a fight by a cut either. And, and it's something that's hard to deal with, and it does it does send a sense of urgency uh, if you're the one that getting that's getting cut. Both these guys are covered in blood now. Going to make them both very slippery, Joe, which is going to make a submission pretty highly unlikely. Oh, good, good up, a good, good right hand. Forward is Joe's Penn. in trouble. And BJ Penn has Joe Stevenson's back. Joe Goods does a great job of rolling over. He gives BJ the mount, though. He's got to keep his composure here. That blood has got to be in his eyes now, but he's doing a good job. He holds on to BJ's wrist. He's gonna roll, but he's gotta be careful and giving up his back. Now, as you said, Joe, the blood is in his eyes. Big it, time. He's just gotta be careful that in this, this terrible spot that he doesn't lose his composure and give up a bad position. He's mounted, but if BJ gets his back with full hooks in. It's the one submission and that he's gonna fly very down. well in the fight. Joe rolls over on his back again. This is better. BJ's got his legs crossed underneath him, though. You see that? That's almost like a guard from the top. And that's a very strong mount there like that. When you have your feet crossed under and you can grip a hold of the guy's body, very difficult for him to shake you off. 90 seconds remains in the round. Another elbow. Oh, oh big that's a punch. big left. Slippery as they are, he's gonna go for the choke. Well, the, you know what, Mike? The slipperiness actually helps chokes. He's got that one arm trapped. Notice that? BJ's really good at that. He traps that left arm. I mean, that's that physical dexterity that he has with his legs. He's got the choke. Here we that's go. It. That's it. That's a wrap. It is all over. BJ Penn is the UFC lightweight champion. Sean Shark, how frustrating is that to hear those words? Yeah, that's real frustrating. It's something I've worked real hard to get, and it's something I still feel like belongs to me. So it uh, looks like it'll be me and BJ next, and uh, get that belt back where it belongs, right, right in Minnesota. Give us your thoughts on that fight. Um, it's not going to go like this one did. You know, I feel like my boxing's better than his. I'm, I'm, my cardio's better. My heart's bigger. Um, you know, I mean, anything can, can happen in a fight, though. Show the world! Show the world! Let's take a look at the beginning of the end. As soon as BJ had him mounted, Joe was in some big, big trouble. Rock solid mount by BJ. He rolls him over, gets his back, and in this position, the blood actually helps get the choke. It makes it more slippery. It helps that arm sink underneath the neck. And he's got it deep. What a great bit of heart and courage shown by Stevenson. But BJ Penn, the prodigy has finally captured the lightweight title and becomes just the second man in UFC history to win a championship in two different weight classes. A failed attempt early against Pulver, the draw against Uno, but tonight he captures the title, Sean. Yep, yep, in, in dynamic fashion. I mean, he looked good. He looked like he was in shape. He came here ready to go. I mean, it could be a revamp, revamped uh, BJ Penn. Well, you want nothing other than to face the best at their best. That's my job, you know? Good job. Fantastic. Got your breath. Got your breath. B.J. Penn defeats Joe Daddy Stevenson. Stevenson overwhelmed with emotion. Good fight, Joe. He's got a bright future as well. Bruce Buffer has the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Dean has called a stop to this contest at four minutes, two seconds of the second round, declaring the winner by tap out due to a rear naked choke. And now, the new UFC lightweight champion of